Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into a topic that I know is a huge pain point for a lot of you, exporting DXF files for manufacturing from a large SOLIDWORKS assembly. You know the drill. You have to open each sheet metal part, make sure the properties are correct, flatten it, save it as a DXF, and then do it all over again for the next part. It's slow, it's boring, and it's easy to make mistakes. What if you could do it all, and I mean all of it, with a single click? Today, we're breaking down a C-sharp macro that does exactly that. This isn't just a simple export loop, it's a smart, robust tool that prepares your files before exporting them. Let's take a look at the code. Alright, here's the code that runs when we click our Export DXF button. It might look a little intimidating at first, but we're going to break it down step by step. The whole process can be understood in three main stages, the safety checks, the preparation phase, and the main action. First things first, a good macro should never assume everything is perfect. Before it does anything it runs a series of safety checks. First it checks, is SOLIDWORKS even running? If not, it stops. Next, is there a file open? If you haven't opened an assembly or part it can't do anything. And finally, a really important one. Has this file been saved? The macro needs the file path to work correctly so it forces you to save your assembly before you can continue. This is great practice, it prevents weird errors and makes the tool much more user friendly. Now this is where the real magic happens, and it's what separates a simple macro from a powerful one. If we're working on an assembly, the macro runs a series of preparation tasks. These are optional, and in the real tool, you'd turn them on or off with checkboxes. Step 1. Get quantities. The macro can automatically calculate how many of each part you need from the bill of materials and write that quantity as a custom property to each part file. Step 2. Get thickness. It then finds the sheet metal thickness of each part and again writes that to a custom property. No more manually typing 2mm steel. Step 3. Copy other properties. This is a flexible step to copy any other data you need like a material or a project number down to the parts. Now for the most critical step in this whole section, all those properties we just added, the quantity, the thickness, they only exist in the computer's memory at this point. If we don't save them, the DXF export won't see them. This line of code here programmatically saves every single component that was just modified. This makes the changes permanent and ensures our final DXFs will have the correct data. Think of it like writing a document. You can type all you want, but until you hit save, the file on your hard drive is still the old version. This macro hits save for you on all the parts. Okay, all our parts have been updated and saved. They're prepped and ready for export. Now the macro finally runs the main event. This part of the code goes through the assembly, finds all the sheet metal components, creates a flat pattern, and exports it as a DXF file. Because we did all that prep work, the exported files can now be named with the correct thickness and quantity, or contain that data, making life easier for the laser cutter operator. And once it's all done, it doesn't just close, it gives you a final report. It tells you how many operations succeeded, how many failed, and how long the whole process took. This is fantastic feedback for the user. So let's recap why this macro is so effective. It's safe. It checks for common problems before it starts. It's smart. It enriches the part files with crucial manufacturing data before exporting. It doesn't just export, it prepares. It's reliable. That save all step is the key. It guarantees that the data you're exporting is the most up-to-date version. It's user-friendly. The final summary report tells you exactly what happened. By building your automation this way, with checks, preparation, and action, you create tools that don't just save time, but also reduce errors and improve your entire manufacturing workflow. That's all for today's code breakdown. If you found this helpful and want to see more SOLIDWORKS automation tips, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And let me know in the comments what you would automate in SOLIDWORKS if you could. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.